Whatever the realities we face in life, we can all dream, and occasionally a story comes along that lends weight to the proposition. Gina Sinezic had a dream to be a painter, but she was in her 70s when she first followed that dream. Four years later, the Sydney artist's works have been displayed in galleries across the country, from the National Gallery in Canberra to the Australian National Maritime Museum in Sydney. And an exhibition of her works opens in New Zealand in April. Rebecca Bailey reports. It's an ordinary brick bungalow in the middle of Sydney suburbia. Seemingly a most unlikely spot to unearth one of Australia's most exciting new artistic talents. It's rare that you get this immediate engagement with what the artist is doing. And, and I was in no doubt that, that there was something here. Every time that she puts on a show, there's a, there's a rumble to try to get in there through the door to buy the work. While 74-year-old Gina Sinezic's works are very much in demand, she only started painting four years ago as a way to deal with personal tragedy. My husband started to become ill about seven years ago and I care for him for all the time. Dementia is an uh, awful sickness. They are not probably in pain physically, but mentally they are not there. Oh, very nice. Really nice. You keep it. Oh, thank you. keep it as you want it. It's hard. It's very hard. Because you have a person there, you can't con have a conversation. The person you spend your life, and they are a different person. You can talk to him. We have no discussion about families. We have no discussion about their children. Any discussion at all. Housebound and lonely, Gina Sinezic needed an escape. So she decided to try something new and began to paint. My son asked me a couple of times, even you know, years ago, he said, Mom, why don't you write a book? And I said, well, write a book for me, the spelling is not so good. <laughs> so I'm thinking you know, it would be a good idea if I do painting and tell the kids the story. I want to tell the, my children and grandchildren the story so they know where their roots come from. Untrained and with no idea of what materials to use, her first painting was on an old council sign she found on the side of the road. She then started painting on discarded Holland blinds. It was cheap. <laughs> And I didn't know of any other, you know, other things that I could use, you know. I just used to go to the shop and buy acrylic paint on in the new hygiene. Day in, day out, Gina Sinezic painted. Until one day, the director of the Kasula Powerhouse Arts Centre visited her makeshift studio and discovered her work. I was just really knocked out by it. I, I you know, I, I just, I just went in there and I... And I was just, my breath was taken away. I wanted to know more about her story. I wanted to know why she painted. And he said, Gina, you know that you have natural talent for painting? No, I didn't know that. <laughs> it's new to me. And uh, then he said, uh, he said, I would like the exhibition. And I said, I don't believe it. <laughs> Since they met two years ago, Con Guriotis has staged a number of sell-out exhibitions of Gina Sinezic's paintings. It was at one show that he introduced her work to prominent art collector Peter Fay. He came out with this painting, which was a, a painting of the uh, partisans being lined up to be shot. And it was one of those moments where you think, oh, this is, you know, rewrites the whole history. And I said, that's fantastic. Gina Sinezic's extraordinary life story and experiences provide rich inspiration for her art. Born in Croatia, Gina Sinezic married a Second World War hero, Eugene Sinezic, who had faced a Nazi firing squad and survived. He said there was around a thousand of partisans to be shot there, and they call a priest to give them a blessing. But the priest instead, you know, he begged the commander not to shoot them, but take them prisoner. So they did. In the 1950s, when Croatia was part of communist Yugoslavia, life was so hard for Gina Sinezic and her family, they decided to leave their homeland. As refugees in Italy, 
the family managed to get papers to emigrate to Australia. They faced a long sea journey to their new country. We went uh, on the ship Neptunia and was uh, through the journey in the sea was very, very sick because in the Indian Ocean was a sea storm and it was, uh, you know, it's unbelievable. Then uh, on 16 of August 1957, we, uh, about 11 o'clock in the morning, came to Melbourne. We were just happy to be there. We were just happy. I said, Nea, is there a future here? We have to look forward, you know, whatever we can, you know, uh, achieve and make sure that uh, we are work hard to achieve what we needed. The Sinezich family has a typical migrant story and one that the Australian National Maritime Museum in Sydney commissioned Gina Sinezich to record in paint. It's all part of the museum's commitment to telling Australia's immigrant history. This is one of our challenges at the museum. If we are telling migrant stories through objects, how do you tell a refugee story when often they come with absolutely nothing? I mean, the three little suitcases in this ex exhibition, it's, it's all that her family brought with us. So you have to find new ways of telling that story. And art is a fantastic way of doing it. For Gina Sinezic, the newfound national exposure and success is one thing. But she's just happy that her family now has a tangible record of its history. And at 74, she's proof that it's never too late to do anything. Gina's had this whole thing, you know, bottled up within her. And so, late flowering, yes, but because it's, it's had such a, a gestation period, I mean, I also see a lot of young artists who may have a lot of skills, but they've got nothing to say. They've got no experience. I do mine in my own way, you know, I have no training. So I do the way I think is the best I do. And I'm surprised that people love them. What a remarkable story. Apply that how you will. Rebecca Bailey with that report.